In this lesson, we'll continue our review of writing test eight, section two. We're still on the second passage, a lion's share of luck, question 18. And we have a new paragraph. We see these brackets. There will be a question about sentence order at some point. While there are many regional variations of the lion dance costume, all make extensive use of symbols and colors. The lion's head is often adorned with a phoenix, a mythical bird, or a tortoise for longevity. So question 18, which choice provides information that's most consistent in style and content with the information about the symbolism of the tortoise. So the tortoise is given, it's adorned with the tortoise because the tortoise represents longevity, long life. Is the fact that a phoenix is a mythical bird, is that consistent? No, we want some purpose that the phoenix serves just like for longevity. If you look at the choices, it's definitely for new beginnings, right? Parallel structure. Green lines encourage friendliness. Golden and red lines represent liveliness and bravery, respectively. Their older counterparts, yellow and white lines, dance more slowly and deliberately. In some variations, lines of different colors are different ages, and they move accordingly. Black lions are the youngest, therefore they dance quickly and playfully. The appearance of lines varies, but their message is consistent. Happy New Year. So here's that question about sentence order. Where should we place sentence five? their older counterparts. And so again, this is a type of evidence-based question. You wanna be consistent. And right away from reading this, you see how we've got their, or, their older counterparts. And then we have further, in seven, black lions are the youngest, right? Don't you think it would logically be followed to list the youngest and then their older counterparts, right? Logical order. And definitely is the better choice here. So the answer is seven. We, we wanna move this after seven. So black lines are the youngest, therefore they dance quickly and playfully, their older counterparts more slowly and deliberately. So that was a pretty straightforward question number 19. All right, let's take a look at, got a few more questions in this passage. As the parade winds its way through Chinatown, the music crescendos and the lion dance reaches its climax with the plucking of the greens. And so here, this is a pretty straightforward question. Its climax, this is a singular possessive. There is never an apostrophe. It's just its, right? It is, that would be the contraction for it is, the way it appears, but it's just its. If it were plural, it'd be there. But the answer is B. Approaching a doorway in which dangles a red envelope filled with green paper money, the lion's teeth snare the envelope. And so for 21, you want to think about this. Are the teeth actually snaring it or does the lion snare it by using his teeth, right? This doesn't really make sense. It's not the teeth that snare it. It's the lion snaring it with his teeth, right? And so the answer here is B for number 21. And I've got one more question in this passage. It then chews up the bills and spits out the money-filled envelope instead of chewing it up. The crowd cheers for the line dancers and for the prosperity and good fortune their, their dance foretells. All right, so for 22 here, we already were told a red envelope filled with green paper money. It chews up the bills and spits out the money-filled envelope instead of chewing it up. This is r repetitive and it's also um, awkward and bulky. We want to make it concise and eliminate the redundancy. And so do we really need that it's money filled? That was already introduced instead of chewing it up. That I don't think is relevant either. Why not just state the envelope, right? And that is the answer, D.